what is going on y'all welcome back we are back again for another episode review of survivor y'all this is season 46 episode four don't touch the oven okay we don't even hold y'all we're just gonna get right into it because i must say the end of this vote was something that was very much so long overdue okay um this episode it was good only because I was I was glad that one tribe got redemption, and then at the other time I was glad that we finally had to get rid of a weak leak that needed to go. Okay, um, before we get into the review, y'all already know what to do. Thumbs it up as you come in here, and please share the video if you care. Um, subscribe to all the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to this channel. Um, what is that? IG, Twitter, and all the other places where you can find us. Okay, that part. That part. All right, um, first of all, sis, how you doing today? My survivor soul sister. And might I say, okay, and I've been doing my research looking around on YouTube, and please somebody come in and correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say there's only like one or two other black YouTubers that are talking about Survivor. Really? Yes. Oh, that's... <laughs> I had no idea. But there was one other black girl that I've seen that was talking about Survivor. And then I think it was this young black guy that was talking about it as well. And again, if y'all know of other people, please drop it down in the comments. Let me know. Please. Don't, don't come for us because we didn't send for you. I'm just simply saying, I think we are one of a handful of black folks that are talking about survivors that are survivor super fans. So shout out to us. You know yes. Saying? There's space for us. Yeah. We created it. Thank the gods. Okay. So <laughs> we pick up. With, we're going to start with the Yanni tribe, okay? We pick up where they left off last week when um, Probsy came and told them that Randy went <laughs> home. <That's right. laughs> so, you know, um, your boy, Banu dodged a bullet because otherwise his ass was going to be on the first thing smoking up out of Fiji, okay? So he, Banu, for whatever reason, decides, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and keep it real with my, my teammates, my tribe members. So he sits Tiffany and Q down and he tells them, hey, look, you know, I got to tell you what happened when I went on this journey. Um, I told the guys um, that, well, I told Ben, it was Ben and Liz, I told them that Kenzie pretty much is running the show here. And then they asked where the both of you two tied. And I was like, yeah, sure, they're cool, but, you know, it's not a big deal. And of course, Tiffany and Q was like, nigga, what in the hell is wrong with you? What would you, what would, what, why? And again, that's why I say Banu came in here with a good heart, but he came in here with no damn gameplay. What would possess you? And, and I, I'll give him credit. I, I appreciate you for coming forth and telling the truth. But that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but the, the, again, there was like, <laughs> no sense of like awareness of how to play the game so much so that they were role playing back and forth how to talk and not what to reveal while you're strategizing with somebody as well as talking to probesy at um uh the uh, tribal council mm -hmm. like I, I like in in my job we do social stories <laughs> And that's how we get that point across. It just seemed like he was about to create a damn social story for Bonnie on how to survive Survivor. Q was like, all right, so let's go through a scenario. Hey, Banu, how how you feeling? How's it going with the other tribe? And the way Banu was describing, oh, um, yes, we're vibing. Everyone is vibing. First of all, you ain't talk like that. <laughs> You don't talk like that, Banu. That's cute, though. Q was actually trying to give him a real-life scenario if you're having a conversation. And he still wasn't really too much getting it. And again, it's it's a self-awareness. Banu doesn't realize he talks too damn much. You can come in here with all the intention, all the goodness in the world, but this is a game. This is a game. And that's the game I was saying, like, in our last... And in, in one last week, how can you, before you go on a show, you need to binge watch every single episode of it so you know exactly what it is that you're walking into. And you Yeah, he just looked like a newborn. Like, he was just a newbie. He had no idea. Like, like when, like, 
when he found out Jess voted for him and they had to explain it to him, it was just like, oh my friend, just read the damn forest <laughs> the damn campsite. Oh I don't think he watched any. I thought no. he did. But, you know, I don't even think he even said that in the first episode, whether he was a super fan or not. Bless his heart, though. You know, hey, <laughs> like I said, we got our redemption in the end. Um, Nami. Let's move on over to Nami Chai. Tevin and Soda. I like their dynamic together. I like how they do. You know, black folks, we'll make a song out of anything. And I think that's what's so cute about Soda and Tevin, even though they work in Hunter's last ass nerve. Hunter can't stand that shit. <laughs> Which is why I love it even more. Okay. He's just sitting there against the tree, just watching him be black. Watching him be just black. Just watching him just blacking it up. <laughs> and it's like, and I just feel like I saw, I saw, I was like, oh, dang, I've done that to some of my white friends. I've blacked it up a couple. And you know what? It is what it is. Like, you're not going to stop me until I get this blackness out of my system real quick. I'm going <laughs> to have to meditate afterward and then I'll black it up again. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you, being the only African-American at my job, when I get a little glimpse of blackness that comes in, whether it be a resident following me for the day or, or you know, somebody coming in to help to fill in, I that's when I get to let my blackness out. It's the same yeah. in deaf ed or just in special ed. Like, it's just the same thing. <laughs> It really. I love it. I'm, and, 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 yeah, I've, I've had a meeting. I've had an IEP where we were all black women. It was definitely a black lady sketch show when they were in court. It was the first time, and I like savored. It was the the print, the admin, the speech therapist, the case manager, the gen ed teacher, and me. <laughs> all black women. You just don't get it a lot. So that Tevin Soda dynamic really did. <clears throat> Bring me back to like college or like summer camp or like when yeah. you 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 and the other black person make that eye contact, we're gonna tear it up. We're gonna tear it up. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah. what they were doing. And Hunter should be uh, used to it because that fool's from the south. Like he's from Alabama or Mississippi or somewhere. So this ain't he is true to this. He ain't brand new to black blackness. That, um, black sign language. When you can look at another black person and y'all talk with y'all eyes. That's black sign language, right? Telepathic. <laughs> yeah. Now, later on in the tribe, okay, um, I'm skipping kind of here, but this still this still very relevant to the Nami Nami tribe. Later on, Tevin realizes that Soda is a social butterfly. She gets along with everybody. She has no beef with anybody. She she goes from person to person in the tribe and she just basically makes herself available and makes herself friendly. And Tevin sees that. And he's like, hmm, maybe the first chance we get to go to tribal council, maybe Soda got to go. OK, he brings this idea to, um, to Hunter, Hunter first. And I said that was the smartest thing he could have done was bring it to Hunter first versus anybody else. Yeah. And Hunter was giddy for him to bring it to him because Hunter basically is like, soda is the only thing that's standing in between me being Tevin's number one. Now, we already know that Tevin is known as being the king of the tribe. At least that's what Venus says. So Hunter is going to do whatever he can to put himself in position to be closer to Tevin. And so he bring Tevin brings that to Hunter and Liz that, like, hey, look, we might have to bust soda up out of here. The first chance that we get now you and, and I liz are, is excited liz is completely excited because she feels like she's on the bottom so like, anything but me yeah. is liz's game anybody but me now me and you talked about this i'm gonna keep it real i don't think that was a good idea for tevin to do this early in the game y'all ain't even been to a tribal council just yet y'all knew was four down you all have yet to get to uh, a, a tribal council. Now, I get it. When you haven't been to tribal council, you you get it. you anxious. It's like you stir crazy because you really haven't even officially played the game just yet. 
And let's keep it real with NAMI. Y'all have won every single tribal like challenge. So you have not been to tribal council. And not only that, I'm going to keep it real from a black point of view. Tevin, why are you conspiring like that with these white folks to take your sister out like that? You can at least, and I'm going to be real, at least wait till y'all get to a merge. And I get have those seeds planted in 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 a backup plan okay hunter and liz is your backup plan should something don't work out with you and soda okay you have that on that for your backup plan you don't already sold them seeds but to already be ready to get rid of her at your next tribal council out of fear that she might still steal the spotlight or she might get along with people and push you out that's a little bit premature it really is that. especially since uh, Sega still has the majority numbers, so you're still giving away a vote for out of being bored and spite because you're annoyed. That's not part of the game, or at least if that's part of your game, that's fine, but shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, I, 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 that's very premature. I don't think that was a good idea. Now, don't get me wrong, no Tino Shade, no Pete Lemonade. Tevin is still my number one. I, I want to see Tevin win. I'm going to be very disappointed. If Tevin don't win, if Tevin don't win, it at least needs to be Maria. But again, I just think that this was very, very premature for him to already be on the be ready to get rid of soda. If for nothing else, don't you don't you want to see at least two of y'all, two of your two two of your skin folk make it to the end? I'm just saying. Yeah, man. final two, baby, final two. Saying you at least want, and then not only that, who's to say? Because Hunter has already said he is the only thing standing in between him being number one is heaven and soda. How do you know when y'all get to merge, Hunter gonna plant a seed to get your ass out of there because he sees that you are the king and that you can get along with anybody and you can make moves. He gonna plant that seed in everybody else's head. And they, and of course, the first chance he gets, the very first chance that Hunter gets to get Tevin out of there, he going to do that shit because Hunter knows that he can't beat Tevin. No. He might give him in a physical challenge, but when it comes to winning the votes of the tribe, Hunter not going to do that. Tevin going to take that 10 times. So again, it was very premature for Tevin to put that out there about Soda when Hunter and especially Liz... I'm sorry, Liz ain't got no loyalty to no goddamn body. She has, and she's she's really out there for the experience. I think she said that somewhat this time, like in this episode. Like she's she not, to... she does I don't think she expects herself to go to the end. No, she's there. Yeah, exactly right. She's there to just kick it. <laughs> and I have a story to tell, you know, to her people and them. Yeah. So let's get to the Sega tribe. Okay, so we all know Gemma found a beware advantage last week. And because their tribe has not lost anything just yet, she doesn't know the next clue to find the actual, um, what is it, um, immunity necklace or whatnot. So she decides that she's going to rebury the, the well, basically, she's going to put the note back out there, the beware advantage note, so that somebody else in the tribe can find it and hopefully kind of throw the scent off or away from her, even though it's not even on her in the first place. So she mm -hmm. buries the beware advantage, you know, the paper, the note or whatnot, puts it in the tree. And for whatever reason, the team decides to go out and do. As a family, <laughs> look, I walk, look for it all together. <laughs> I mean, it's cute, but. Girl, bye. This is this is a game of survival. I'm not gonna go. I it. know. I would not do. I'll do what everyone else says. I'm gonna find some wood. Yeah, I'm gonna get some water. I'll be gone for about three hours. What? A group? That's stupid. Anyway, everybody goes looking for the immunity idol. Maria finds it, and she sees that it's a beware advantage. And of course, everybody's around. Gemma, of course, is looking because she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they finna. Have you noticed throughout this whole? thing jim is always on the outside and no one questions or is like jimma you're not interested in figuring it out Eat, like no one questions her but she has pl purposely placed herself on the outside of just like she's watching it through a window and mm -hmm. i would have been suspicious if i was 
on that tribe. The first thing I'd have been like, wait a minute, you don't you don't want to know? Come on, you don't behavior tells everything. Behavior tells everything, and I think that's what a lot of people are missing. The first few days of Survivor is mm -hmm. recognizing people's patterns. Yes. So. Of course, the Beware Advantage says, you know, dig where you found this. And so there is no box that's buried right there. So they're just digging and digging out. It's Maria because Maria decides, you know, I didn't come all this way to Fiji and not play the game of Survivor. So she's digging. She's looking for it. And they just getting their ass bit up by these big ass Fijian ants because there is nothing buried there, which. I don't know. I just feel like. Uh, I don't know. I don't think she, I, I, I don't think that was good for her to do. I don't think that was good for her to do. And then eventually, you know, somebody puts it out there. You know what? I feel like somebody did this to throw us off because they already have the hidden immunity idol. And maybe somebody's just putting it here to throw us off. Well, lo and behold, good for Gemma. Who is it? Mariah puts it out there. And why she puts it out there for whatever, I thought her reasoning was stupid. She puts it out there that maybe Tim is the one who actually has the hidden immunity idol. And that the reason she feels that is because he was the one that was digging for it the most. And maybe he was the one that was digging for it the most to try to throw the rest of us off that he was the one that really had it. And I'm just like, Mariah, that's dumb. That's really dumb. That's 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 the best you could come up with. How about the person that's not even trying at all, Gemma? Hello, who's sitting behind all of you laughing? Ain't said two words and hasn't lifted a finger. We playing with a bunch of amateurs this season. Jim. I mean, we are playing with a bunch of amateurs this year. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is the season of amateurs. So far, they haven't really been, you know, doing a whole lot of nothing. But it was Ben that threw it out there that somebody could have had it. And again, Mariah throws Tim's name out there for whatever reason. I didn't get it, but we gonna roll with it. Okay, you know, you know, the pro black me was like, mm -mm, you was just looking for a reason to throw the nigga up under the bus. That's all it was. <laughs> Even though I'm sure this is like that. Even though some, but it does because it's like, where did that come from? Like, where did that where did that name come from? If he was helping y'all dig and he was just too eager, that's like saying Serena had an edge over her competition because she was pregnant. <laughs> like, really? So, huh? That makes no goddamn sense. But anyways, y'all y'all like it. I love it. So we get to the challenge and everybody sees that Randon left. Okay, now this first challenge is a reward challenge and they're going to be playing for food, right? Now, I, I let's just say, y'all knew they, they finally came through and they finally won. I was very excited for them. Coach Q was like, I told y'all, Coach Q told you. Ahead of everyone, there was no competition. There was nothing. They finally were in sync. I don't know what it was. They did really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the fact because they were playing. At first, I was like, they playing for food. And as soon as Jeff revealed that it would be these fishes, they was like, uh, -uh we're gonna have to trade that shit in. Because I, I we need our we need the tarp and we need this and we need that. So they ended up coming through winning. I was very, 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 very happy for them. Um, who was that? Coach Q running for the team. Nami comes in second place. Sega. They don't win anything. They don't win nothing. They get to go on back to where it was. Now, Maria feels like it was her fault that they lost that reward challenge because she couldn't get this ring. You know, one, one part of it, she couldn't get this ring that was up over that thing. And so she feels like it was her fault. And that comes from her cultural brat, cultural background. She's Lebanon. She's from Lebanese. Shout out to my, one of my good homegirls, Manal. She's Lebanon as well. Shout out to you, boo boo. Love you, girl. But because of her cultural background, she says that her parents always expected nothing but the best from her. There was no such thing as failing. So in that moment, she felt like she failed and she failed it for the rest of the trial. Which, Maria, you steal my number two, girl. I'm That's what I'm saying. It was specifically, she said, for her family's success meant survival. And I can definitely relate to that. As long as you're successful, you don't give anyone any excuse to tell to ask you why. You just give them the why not. The yeah. success means money, uh, food on the table. Yeah. 
I totally got where she was coming from and how much pressure us kids coming from that growth uh, living situation growing up, we still put it on ourselves. And, Cause we do want to be successful want the next thing better than what we had. And um, again, this was another, the Island revealing itself to yeah. a player. She was addressing her deep traumas for it. And that was, that, that was good. It was good to see that. And another thing that I absolutely loved is Tevin had a moment as well. Tevin said that, um, when he was younger, he used to go fishing with his father. He would clean fish with his father all the time. His father passed away 10 months before he actually came there to film. I don't want to get too deep in because I don't want to start crying because it made me think about my, you know, Jim. And Jay mine too. I lost my mom. So I think it was, it was very sentimental for the both of us because, ooh. Yeah. I lost my daddy and I, I, I went fishing with him when I was growing up, but. You know, yeah. it really did touch a sweet spot for me. It absolutely you know. did. He, he, I could, I, he, he used the skill to scale the fish. Um, that's what his dad, dad taught him. And I thought that was very beautiful and healing because he didn't come back torn up from it. But he, he did it on his own. But when he came back, he was able to provide for everyone and had the biggest smile on his face. And I think grief also looks like that. It's not just the sadness and the deepness. There is sadness in the smiles too. Grief with a yeah. grin. He would, he, I was very proud of him and, and glad that he had to have that moment. And he dedicated that moment to his father. So shout out to you, Tevin Boo. Much love for you. Coach Q, you know, he's he um, once again he's talking with Banu how to how to how to navigate gameplay. And Banu is pissed because he's not really adapting to the game. He goes to Kenzie and he's like, you know, Coach Q kind of went through some things with me on on how to talk to people and how to navigate through this, you know, Kenzie, and I want to practice with you too. Kenzie's like, okay, we just want something. Calm down. They're like, let me chill. She snaps at him. Banu gets upset. And then Kenzie basically has to check herself because she knows how emotional Banu is. And then she has to go back and apologize and comfort him. That alone would piss me off. I'm trying to stay stress-free and keep my own mind in the game. And I got to watch what I say because of you. And because you might take like we finally got a win. I just want to savor this. I just want to savor this for a couple of hours before we strategize. Yep. I just I was glad how this ended, how it ended. I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna say that. Now they preparing for their next challenge, the immunity challenge. And this shit tickled me. They had to teach Mariah how to jump. I never, and you can ask Jenna, baby, I was dying. Wait, like we had to pause it because Auntie was laughing, crying, sure. laughing, crying. Oh, and we had to pause it. And then this whole time I'm thinking, oh, she can't jump off of something. That's what I was thinking until she was literally saying, I don't know how to jump. She even said, like, all of her friends told her, so, like, you're going to have to tell your tribe, like, the first day. And she's like, no, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine until episode four, girl, when you got to jump. <laughs> and I don't know how you – Charlie, Charlie just couldn't even – like, no one could believe it, but Charlie was <laughs> – same. I thought she was saying, like, I have a fear of jumping off. Like of heights. I thought she was right. talking about, I have a fear of heights, so I can't jump off of things. Not actual, like, like yeah, I, I get that. I'm with you. Hop. Girl. Like hopping up and down off of. Like hop, skip, jump. No, she can't do none of that. She cannot hop. She cannot skip because skip car requires you to jump in a hop sort of way. Mama can't hop, skip, or jump. That is wild to me. In my 43 years of life, I have never now it's some shit that I've heard and it's some shit that I've seen, but I've never seen or heard somebody that cannot like she, like how we can like crisscross, jump, jump. Mom can't do that. How did you huh? Or not even with House of Pain jump around. She couldn't even do that. She couldn't even jump around with House of Pain. She can't even jump for your love, okay? <laughs> she can't jump with Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you can't even jump with Tyler's new drop. <laughs> Literally, no jumper. Okay, Literally. And I thought that was so cute, but I'm like, oh. So it comes to the immunity challenge, and I blame Banu for them losing because Banu was a little bit overambitious. He missed the whole part of the challenge. That yeah, start over. Mm -hmm. And start over. That pissed me the hell off. I'm like, bruh. So, of course, you know, they they lose the challenge once again. But we haven't said something. Tim gave a poor performance in both the reward and immunity challenge this week. <laughs> Tim on Sega was not it <laughs> this week. But even, even him not being it, Banu still found a way. <laughs> To lose it. Lot of camera time. Hopefully we'll make up for it as, as episodes pass. Or you know what? What if he messes around and wins the show? That would be great because he's sure not getting a whole lot of camera time and we're four episodes in. But maybe that says something for, for what's to come. But like history has been showing with season 46, Nami is number one, Sega's number two, and Yanu is once again in third place. They're heartbroken. They already know who they're going to vote for. They're straight up with Banu. Banu asks them who they're going to vote for. They tell them. When he asked Tiffany, and Tiffany was like, I'm not going to lie to you, Banu. I'm going to write your name now. When this man got on his knees and started groveling and begging her, I, that was the last straw for me. That was the last straw for me. I'm like, he got to go. He's weak. He has no gameplay. He has no no, no vote. He has no vote. No vote. <laughs> no shot in the dark. No nada. You got to go, bucko. He kept asking God, is this the plan? He meditated every day, and this is the plan God gave him. <laughs> God, like, look, you asking me, I'm showing you. This is the plan. What you want. And what you're, what you're hoping that I'm going to reveal to you may not be my plan. That's your plan that you're going to win and that you're going to stay on the island and that you're going to get it. That's your plan. That ain't my plan. You keep coming to me and asking me and begging me and asking me and praying to me. I'm telling you what's the plan, poo, poo It's time for you to go home. I mean, if you can't come up with your own plan, you shouldn't be on the island. Why are you asking other people for gameplay? This is 46. This is 46, Pupu. You have 45 times to figure out what a plan was. You have 40, 45 seasons. 45 seasons to study. and 25 years to figure this out. 45 seasons and what is this? 24 years to figure it out. Hey, boys and men, although we've come to the end of the road, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. So when it comes to tribal council, Banu already knows he's going home. Um, I do respect the fact that Probe C was like, we don't even have to do a vote, you know, because everybody pretty much already knows. Um, and then I do appreciate that they gave Banu an opportunity basically to tell his story. You know, he said that um, growing up, he was from India, that they lived in a camp exactly like the camp that they're camping in right now, that um, he he was born from a teenage mom, dad didn't want anything basically to do with him, abandoned him when he was three months old, that he, you know, came to the United States. Of course, his mother had this plan and wanted him to have this beautiful life. He loves everybody. He loves everything. And that's just who he is. And that's great. You came there to win a million hearts, and you did. And you did just that with that one story. He he got his million hearts, girl, <laughs> but um, not the million buckaroos. <laughs> that just but he did get those hearts, and that's what he. So next time when he comes back, because I'm sure he's gonna come back, he'll probably have a strategy. Let's help. Oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure if he doesn't come back next season, he's gonna come back the season after, but. He, this is definitely not the last that we have seen of Banu 
on Survivor. And again, like I said, Probsy gave him enough, you know, respect and dignity where I'm not even going to have these folks go through the process of doing a vote. We already know. So, Banu, whenever you're ready, come on up. Banu came on up. He snorted that shit. And, you know, Banu cried. He was emotional. But again, this was not for you. At least this time was not for you. He won his million hearts. That's cute. That's good. But come next week, I don't want to see y'all new at Tribal Council. Really, there's only three of them left. So at this point, they they might have one more vote before merge, but merge is coming. At least the next two episodes, merge is coming. But yes, at least a mini merge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. At least the mini merge mm-hmm. because there's only three of them on on Yanu. So even if they do go to tribal council, like I, I don't see them going to tribal council with it just being three of them. Mm-hmm. I don't see that. I see them doing a mini merge before that, or if if somehow the worlds collide, either Sega or Nami end up losing, and one of them go to tribal council. Preferably, I would rather for be Sega that goes. Yeah, because they have the most. Yeah, and you are number one. Well, we do have a couple, but yeah, yeah, only one is on Sega that we want to see at the end. Yeah. And Gemma didn't open up her mouth, and it messed me up. Because after this was after the um, immunity, but even before immunity, she was just cackling and and then then she was cackling at Mariah (laughs) when Kim's mouth was I couldn't. Um, But Gemma, I didn't like her sneakiness this episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The joke was over when they were getting bit by ants. Is she's playing a dangerous game. If for nothing else, if you were going to do that, I would have waited until after I actually won the immunity and I had it secured in my hand. That way you can make a fake one. You can actually put it in the box. You can actually do it the right way. So someone can actually have a possession in their hand that they think is an immunity necklace. Take that to tribal council and then burn their ass that way. As opposed, like you, you half ass did it. You put that there, and you didn't even you you didn't even have a box buried there. So it's obvious that somebody set it up like a plan. It's a dangerous game, and so now everybody on that island is going to be looking at everybody funny, which they are. Which thanks to Mariah put it out there that it was Tim. Which again, I don't care what nobody say. You did that because that was the only nigga on that tribe, and you was like, look, he did it. What other reason that you have? Because he was too eager to to, to bury, I mean, to, to dig in there. Girl, shut up. Go to hell. I've never made that correlation that somebody did it just because of how eager they were. Girl. I've never made that correlation. If anything, that makes me see like, oh, he needs it more than I do. Nothing else. Exactly. Oh, he really needs it. Yeah, yeah, that's what he needed. Nah, huh? Girl, go to hell. She got on my nerves then. Anyways, though, any other final thoughts about the episode? Like I said, I thought this one was good. I was very happy that we got rid of who we needed to get rid of. By and now. it is kind of like a filler episode. Not not much drama, drama happened. A lot of stuff that we predicted, except for um, uh, Yanu winning, which very proud of them. Even yeah. if it was a reward, they finally got their tarp and whatever else they needed to really make it a home over there, which we'll see what happens next week. Mm-hmm. But um I, I was just happy that Yanu finally won something fair and square. And it just didn't even, they were not even close. It was phenomenal how they, they put that together in motion. So, and I really am proud of Banu having, getting dignity while leaving. It, it really showed a lot of respect because his story was very much of like a slumdog millionaire setup, And it was really sweet that he was finally heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was annoying this whole time, but like, he won his million hearts that way. He, he did. really did. And so to walk off without having your name written down is a rarity in Survivor. Um, so there is dignity. It's not just sneakiness. There is dignity. Mm-hmm. And they even comforted him at the end. They gave him a hug. And Tiffany even said, thank you for sharing that side of you. He didn't know. 
yeah, I thought that was really, really nice that they gave him that opportunity to see a, a, a something that'll let him leave on a good note as opposed to being this crazy-ass hot mess that couldn't get it together. You know, shout out to you, Probsy, for letting him leave with a little bit of dignity. But y'all, next week, like I said, they better get into some for real gameplay. I don't want to see Yanu in Tribal Council. I want to see Seager or Nami at Tribal Council so we can really get into some things. Tevin, I hope you pump your brakes next episode because you my number one, Tevin. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. That's all I'm saying, though. But y'all, we're going to be out of here. Make sure to join us next week for episode five of Survivor Season 46, y'all. We appreciate y'all for coming through here and kicking it with us. And Love we- it. Yes, we will see you guys next week. Y'all have a good one. Peace out.